And now we move to the topic of health care favoritism. The Obama administration has granted at least 915 waivers to companies and unions exempting them from Obamacare. Why is the president exempting companies and unions from his own beloved law? Here now with the answers, Texas Republican Congressman and physician, Michael Burgess. Dr. Burgess, welcome to Freedom Watch. Well, Judge, it's always great to be with you. Well, what do you think the president is up to? I mean, first the labor unions and then some well-known companies, the names of which we all recognize, like McDonald's and Harley Davidson, and now even some states of the union. I mean, what, what is his motivation here? Well, I, I think the motivation is that this thing doesn't work. And rather than just admit it doesn't work, acknowledge that we better get back to the drawing board and make it work if he's serious about his signature legislation, uh, they decided to go the, well, let's just try to, let's just try to patch things together route. The patch things together route began to emerge in late October with one, two, three, then 15, then 25, then 50 waivers. And now, as you point out, we're up to nearly 1,000. And indeed, we have whole states applying for and be accepted for waivers. Does this tell you something about what a bad piece of legislation this was that got signed into law? We're not even a year into this thing, and two and a half million people have now been exempted. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. You're, you're right on the mark, Congressman, and, and you're a doctor. You, 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 you know how to do basic math. If you take all the states that have either received waivers from this or have challenged it in court, and add up all their electoral votes, that's more than half. That would defeat the president. So is it a coincidence that he's looking at places like Florida, Ohio, and even my own home state of New Jersey, uh, perhaps to lessen the burden of federal law and entice more people to vote for him? I mean, do we have a rule of law or a rule of men in this country? Well, I think you could see which direction it's going today. The, their problem, of course, is if it's purely an electoral college calculation, their problem is these waivers are for one year. So they will have to be extended in October, November of next year to get past that election milepost. But here's the thing that is really just driving me crazy. If they are requiring, all these companies and, and people are requiring waivers now, what in their projections going forward leads them to believe that this is going to work any better six months, eight months, 12 months from now. And if there really is no no indication that things are going to be any better then, then what is plan B in right. this instance? Where do you go from here? And we had a hearing about this just the other day. And Mr. Larson, who's the head of the Center for Consumer Information and Over Insurance Oversight, said, well, the plan B is PAPACA, which is the, what we call Obamacare, the Patient Protection Affordable Care Act. That ain't plan B, Judge. Right. That's where we're starting from now. Right, Congress, if that's plan B, we're in a world of hurt. Congressman Burgess, the Republicans control uh, the House of Representatives. This is a Sir. major, major opportunity. To, to drive a truck through this uh, weak, thin wall of Obamacare. But, but one of the ways I would suggest you might want to do it is through public hearings. Put Secretary Sebelius under oath and compel her to justify and explain, Congressman Burgess, every single one of these 915 waivers and why she's enforcing the law against some people and not against others. That is an excellent point, and Secretary Sebelius will be coming to our health subcommittee the first week in March. That is about a year late, according to my estimation. Now, the Democrats, we're not interested in doing oversight hearings. The Republicans did take over the 3rd of January, uh, and those oversight hearings are indeed in the works now. It took a little while to get the committees ramped Good. up, but they're going now, and uh, Secretary, uh, Secretary uh, Sebelius is uh, on the list, and she will be there right after the uh, we're gone next week and she'll be in the week after that. I sent her a letter earlier this week. I said, look, there's a judge down in Florida, very learned man, wrote a very good opinion. Uh, you ought to read it right. because in that opinion he said officers of the Fed, of the executive branch will not proceed with implementation. They will not violate the will of the court. Well, I'm sorry. I think Secretary Sebelius is violating the will of the court. Right. So I sent her a letter and said, please help me understand what you are doing now to delay implementation Con so you're not uh, running counter what the judge recommended. When she comes to you and answers that question, answers that letter, we want you back on Freedom Watch. Congressman Burgess, I, thanks I for joining us. Thank you, Judge.